Yo, yo, yo. Hello, everybody. I'm Jay, and welcome to the extended edition commentary track version of uh, The Making of Night Queen, some Game of Thrones fan art that I made recently. I asked you guys if you wanted some uh, more info in an extended commentary edition, and I got enough comments that I thought warranted it, so here we go. I'm just going to talk about some of the standout stuff, some of the questions you guys left in the comments, you know, the patterns I saw, and I think like the big ticket items. So first I want to go over the major goal of this project for me was to make a, a character render in a relatively short amount of time. It's nothing that's production level. I do make production art, you know, for my job. So I wanted to mess around with different techniques um, be faster, you know, and looser, not so, uh, tied down to the limitations of a production. So make things fast, try to have some fun, you know, just mess around with things I know how to do and try out a few new workflows and things I've been meaning to try. So the goal here was to go start in ZBrush and go to Maya in Arnold. So I started with my own personal base mesh that I built. Um, this was actually the male version and I just pushed and pulled to make it a female so not a big deal there and just started sculpting and then i started extracting shapes the idea was like in the first day was to block it out as much as i could you know i had a pretty general idea of the final composition too so i, I worked towards camera like i didn't do the backside and stuff like that i was pretty sure you know i knew what was going to happen in terms of the final image and pose at the end so i knew i wanted to do kind of an upshot and i wanted to focus on the face and then just kind of gradiate down from there so i knew sculpting the face was going to be pretty fun and straightforward i wanted to get that out of the way first like just dive in there because i knew that would inform me like kind of the rest of the character and i knew i wanted this you know the like the night king kind of facial wrinkles and scars and stuff so i knew that i was going to do that so just normal um zbrush work for me right now posing um rotating some stuff so i'm kind of working in a pose which is a little bit different again than production work which is kind of fun so just blocking out the hands now roughing them into the shape i want this general like uh i don't know like an intense curl you know like she's doing this rise kind of you know she's doing the spell to like rise everyone from the dead it was the idea so just trying to block that in now too and uh trying to stay fast you know this is just kind of normal sculpting stuff i guess for me posing sculpting uh, and doing that. So the thing about being fast is I was trying to, you know, I've been trying to push myself for a while to just not take things too precious and, and try to keep things in context. So you see, just pulling the nails out, not making them separate, uh, just straight up sculpting the hand wrinkles and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So not, not being too precious with it, trying to be fast, laying in the anatomy, you know, that sort of thing. All right. So now I'm going to show uh, how I did the armor, which was another question. And I thought it'd be a good topic to talk about uh, this kind of idea of just doing something the hard way, just grinding it out. Uh, I knew the the armor, like I wanted to model it in the similar way that the show is with these flaps because I knew it would create this, this cool look with the shadows. So I couldn't come up with a clever way. And I said, screw it. I'm just going to I'm just going to do it the brute force way I know how to do it, which happens a lot to me. So that's why I want to talk about this. So I knew that I could, you know, extrude these faces and and make the flaps. Uh, so here I'll just show you. So in so I made first topology with Z remesher that I thought was generally the right shape. I use the modeler to uh, divide them so I get these rectangles. Then I inset them all. So I'm using polygroup all. So I am doing some stuff that's a little bit clever, you know, that it's not like brute force. But then when it came to making them all triangles, I just had to click these points to weld them. And so I knew once I committed, I did a test first to make sure I could do it. This, sh this shoulder pad is kind of a test of it too. So I knew once I did that and it worked out, I would have to do it to all the armor. But uh, you can see that I got the, I got the model. Um, it seems easy when it's sped up really fast, but it was kind of a grind. You can see me do it on the rest of the model now. So I, I kind of know what I'm doing now. I'm dividing it up. I have to make sure that the topology is even. And then I straight up just removed every other face to make these uh, squares into rectangles. 
and then here I am doing the inset, extruding all of it, and then welding the points to make it into like a wedge, and then deleting the faces so I'm left with these flaps kicking out. So yeah, I just wanted to show this because it's, you know, I think it's it's not like it's super cool, but I thought maybe it's an interesting thing to share, you know, just to, it doesn't always have to be, you know, super clever. You can just, if you know how to get something done sometimes, uh, it's better to just do that than to spend forever Googling some fancy way to do it, you know? So it got me the result I was looking for. Um, it, it was a little destructive. It's hard to edit it, but overall I'm happy with how it came out. So that was doing the armor. All right, so now bringing it over to Maya, another question I got. So I'm using the multi-map exporter in ZBrush, which is great. And I'm moving the base color and the displacement. So I go over to my export options. I make sure uh, the default is pretty much good, to be honest. Um, I made sure it's 4K. My base mesh is already UV'd. So if you didn't have UVs, you could just auto UV it, but I was ready to go. And then I exported it out. I thought if 4K wasn't good enough, I would do 8K, but 4K was good enough. I mean, the camera was kind of far away, and so no big deal. You can see at the top it's exporting now. It actually takes like several minutes. And you can also do it with HG geometry. It's actually a little bit faster with HD, um, but there you go. Then you get this really high res displacement. So popping over to Maya now, I imported the mesh. I didn't start with a super low version, by the way. Another little tidbit is uh, when you're doing work like this, like for renders and stuff, no reason to go super low. So this might be subdivision like level three maybe. And that's what I generated the maps from. And then that's what's gonna subdivide. The way that the displacement works is you the you set the mesh up to subdivide on render, which we'll see in a sec. And then you have the displacement moving the verts and then auto creating a bump. So to get started, I assigned an Arnold shader. I did a preset for skin. This is all standard Maya stuff. This comes you know with the program, nothing fancy here. So now I'm plugging in my base color map that was exported to the subsurface color. And then I'm gonna create a displacement node. So really quick, I'm tweaking the subsurface color to be more blue. Eyes bugging out, no big deal. Okay, so then I chose my map, displacement map, and then I'm gonna validate that works. So here I go into the mesh settings. Uh, you leave the scalar zero value to zero, and then you click enable bump, auto bump, and then you do cat Clark subdivisions and then you up the iteration. So when you do the final render, you can even go higher than two, but those settings right there that I just did means that it's gonna subdivide the mesh twice on render, and then it's gonna use the displacement to move the verts, and it's gonna auto-generate a bump map to do the difference. So right now you're gonna see I'm gonna troubleshoot making sure that the displacement works. All right, so there you go. I had to update the render scene. Uh, it just wasn't updating, but now there it goes. So then, yeah, once it's set up, I can get in here and I can do all like these fine details and really go to town. So you see I'm doing like kind of little microwave wrinkles and fine stuff uh, using some of my skin brushes that I've made to, to beat up the surface and make it look more skin like. And this all gets baked. You can also bake a generate a normal map with the multi map export and plug that in. But I'm just letting the beefy 32 bit displacement do it and the auto bump. So I'm also showing you some of the base color detail I added. I was using some marble veins in the ZBrush um, noise maker uh, to make some cool shapes, you know, that would have been hard to paint. So I just want to show that kind of base color detail too. So, you know, I just set up the maps in render again, trying to be fast, setting it up. And then I'm going back to ZBrush, going back to the model and I'm, I'm polishing it up, adding little deets and stuff, and then exporting those high res maps for the render. Okay, so my X-Gen workflow, uh, the hair workflow. The uh, hair was another question I got. So I got to try a workflow that I've been meaning to try for a while now that I haven't gotten to try before. And that's to use fiber mesh and ZBrush to make the curves, to generate the curves that you're using in your X-Gen groom or any groom. And so I wanted to try that because, you know, I'm comfortable in ZBrush. I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's try to make some hair and then I'll export it. So yeah, that's what I just did. I exported as curves brought it into my, you can already see my curves are way more low res than I wanted. Uh, and then I make a scalp, which is kind of common practice. That way you're not attaching hair to the actual mesh. There's also, a there's also a bug where you can't do a paint. You can't paint maps on an Arnold shader. So it's actually just easier to duplicate the mesh. And then I just call it scalp. And that's what I attach the groom to. And then you make the scalp mesh, not renderable, 
so you don't see it. So here I am, uh, I just selected all those uh, curves and I used the XGen tool to convert them into guides. So I thought I was super clever, but then burp, looks like poop. Um, so I spend a lot of time struggling here to get these to work and I end up editing the curves a lot. And then you know what? I would have been better off just, just making the curves. So I learned a couple things though. I still want to try it again and practice. I think grooming in ZBrush for me is more natural actually, to be honest. Um, moving fiber meshes around with the brushes is easier. I mean, the, the guide tools in Maya are good, but just it's not as fast to like make clumps and add a bunch of curves and stuff. So I think in this case, I did too many curves and they weren't high res enough. And anyways, I ended up editing the curves so much that, uh, you know, it wasn't that useful, but I learned some stuff. So next time it'd be better. And then lots of normal X Gen stuff. We could really talk forever about X Gen. Uh, that's literally a whole course in itself, probably, you know, but just doing some things I've learned, uh, typing in some expressions to get some variety. And the thing about the hair was I, I you know, I wanted to like swoop out, like it was rising um, and be crazy. And then I think uh, it got away from me and I ended up revising it. You know, I showed some early renders to some friends and they're like, that looks pretty crazy, dude. I don't know about that. And I was like, you know what? Maybe what I'll do is I'll have it be straight down and be kind of a nicer composition. And then I'll just have some hairs coming up. So same thing with the eyelashes. That's why I threw it in here. So I'm using action for eyelashes too. Some white eyelashes, which I thought would be kind of cool. So uh, there you go. So I ended up just having it be pretty much down and then just having some hairs come up kind of like static is like pulling the hairs up like a little bit of anti-gravity so a little bit more subtle and uh this is what i ended up going with so you can see not even using the curves you know it started with fiber mesh but it ended up being very different but that was my hair workflow lots of trial and error you know lots of time lots of trial and error which tends to be my process for making hair all right, so finally, I just want to end on with the idea of just working fast and loose. Again, this isn't production. This is kind of an illustration, to be honest, I guess, and just having fun doing 3D workflows. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, too, is like learning the lesson the hard way and doing things twice. So I made this piece I'm showing you right now before, and then it crashed, and I lost it, and it really hurt. You know, I think anybody who works digitally can relate. It freaking sucks when you lose work, man. It really hurts. So I took a break and I came back and I used it as an opportunity to be even faster. So I actually modeled these straps. You know, they were all separate. It was a lot more like the forearm. And I was like, while I was making it halfway through, I was like, what are you doing, dude? You're spending so much time and who cares? And then so when it crashed, I tried to just use it as an opportunity to be even faster and looser. You know, I was like, let's, let's just make it again and let's do it as fast as possible. So just using masks, and pulling it out. So these aren't actual bunch of straps, right? This is just some really fast stuff. Um, just did a cavity mask and some negative inflate to, to separate them even more, give it some texture. Uh, and then there you go. So this is really fast. I duplicate it, rotate it around and make the other side. Then I do a, another mask extract, do the little belt thing on it. I import a sphere, squash it to be the little nub that it attaches to. And there you go. So probably one of the sketchiest meshes on here. And you know, it's on a bicep. That's the thing. That's one of the things I'm trying to get better at is understanding the context. It's very easy to just go in the weeds. You know, when you're working on something like this kind of stuff, you end up looking at everything with a magnifying glass. It's like an inch away from your face and you can lose sight of the big picture. So not everything needs to be so good. It holds up to close-ups. I knew I was gonna do materials on here and lighting and nobody's looking at the bicep in the final anyway. So that's why I wanted to mention this cause I, I think that would be useful for me to hear, you know, uh, when I was just spending way too much time on stuff. So just try to remember the context, try to remember the final product, understand the priorities, where people's eyeballs are looking and spend the time there. And everything else is just in support of the overall thing. So there you go. I think it ended up being um, a much better lesson for me uh, and I think it came out fine for what it is, you know? So then, yeah, I imported this stuff. Oh, another example of being fast and loose wanted to show is using um, ZBrush's tools. So here I am UV mapping the gauntlet. I knew I wanted the seams on the reverse camera side. So here I am using ZBrush's tools to say, this is where I want the seam to be. Go ahead and unwrap this. And, uh, and there you go. 
and I just copied it and put it on the model. So now I can export that. So in Arnold, I do some procedural stuff like tiling textures and adding details. All right, so let's uh, take a quick peek here at Arnold stuff. Um, got some questions about that too. That's another big topic. So I'll probably be making more videos down the road and trying to get people into some basics and do some like one-off material demos. But for right now, for this project, let's take a little sneak peek at messing around with some look development that I'm doing on the armor. And then we'll go through the quick process of uh, making the material for the metal kind of brooch in the middle. So the leather armor right now is built up of a kind of generic leather, brown leather that I made using uh, a texture set that I made in Substance Alchemist. So it's procedural. That's the idea here. Um, some things have UVs, some things don't have UVs. So I can use triplanar projection. That means I can just apply the texture. So I started by making a basic leather. Then now I'm working with a layered shader. So I have two shaders. I got the leather and then I got snow, which is what I'm tweaking around right now. The snow is built up all the procedurals. And then there's a mask that I used. Uh, that's just kind of a grunge, grunge mask. So right now I'm playing around with the bump height uh, and the scale. And that's generated by AI noise, which is a Arnold node. So on the right, you can see these nodes changing. So I've got a couple noise nodes. Here's a cell noise. So I'm just playing with parameters to get something that I like. Right now I'm playing with like, maybe it's kind of flaky um, or maybe it's noisy, I don't know. So I'm trying to give it variation. You can see here to make it look a little bit more detailed and catch the light and give it some separation. I want it to be, you know, have some height. And you can see me also switching the render like kind of debug mode to just to isolate selected so I can see the mask that I'm working on. I'm using an AI color correct node there that lets me do the crunching and stuff. So this is letting me play with, you know, this material, these parameters by having the, the mask and then the snow material that I'm iterating on. And the leather material is pretty good. So I'm just messing around now with values until I get something that I'm happy with. Uh, and so that's generally the process. Um, this is kind of simple because this character is made up of pretty much just like two or three different kinds of materials. Um, but that's the process, lots of iterations. So let's take a look at this brooch. So this brooch, I just made a generic uh, grungy metal texture set. And then now I'm playing with the AI curvature node. So this uh, lets me do curvature in Maya. So it's procedural. And I'm using it now so that I can find the edges and this is the model that I, you know, quickly sculpted in ZBrush. So trying to get some uh, detail, like bring out some detail that's in the sculpt and also use the information in the sculpt to drive some of the material parameters. So right now I'm, I want it to be a little grimy uh, in those crevices. So you can see that it's also separating the shapes. So I've got this procedural metal that's just like triplanar on there. I, maybe I did a UV map. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. It's fast. Uh, it's a generic metal. Uh, texture set mixed with a sculpt that I did and then it has the curvature that really makes it feel like it's a unique one-to-one -one kind of material you know here I am again tweaking curvature but this time in context so it's like kind of a grimy dirt in the uh, crevices and again I also like it because it breaks up the material gives a material contrast shape contrast uh, and there you go rendering so you get to see all the little deets that are popping out and you can see a close-up of that leather so so there you go just procedurals um making texture sets and substance alchemists uh, i like doing that and then iterating and doing look dev in arnold and now all the pieces are there do a little bit of final look dev you know and then render it out in 4k and then i brought that in to photoshop to finish the image you know added a background and did uh some color correcting and stuff and that was how i i finished this project so yeah, I hope uh, you found this interesting. These are for you guys that wanted to see an extended commentary edition of this. If you're into this sort of thing and want this for more projects of mine, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to you know, share some tidbits here and there and, and let you guys in on more of the process and answer some questions that you have. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.